What is going on everyone and welcome back to Two Times The Grind. I'm not even going to start with the spiel of like where we've been or anything, mm. but we're hopefully going to come at you guys with this new episode um, with a bit of regularity, yeah. with some uh, consistency. Finally. Yeah, that's what we're going to try and do. So really excited to be back, um, especially excited to be drinking this coffee because honestly, it's been one of those afternoons where I really, really need some coffee. Mm. Um, and this today, this roast actually was given us uh, given to us excuse me by one of our very very good friends actually one of our best friends um bravo who is andy didinsky he is a hcs caster he's actually just he can cast honestly anything to be honest and we've seen that in halo haven't we recently where he cast shows he's morning and he won an award for it he did he won a pretty big award so for i'd it. say he's pretty good He's very good at esports caster of the year. <laughs> uh, absolutely incredible. Um, but he did actually bring this from North Jersey, where he uh, resides, where his family is uh, residing currently. Uh, it's from Black River Roasters. It's called Timor. Um, this is gorgeous. We've, you know, spoiler, had this quite a bit already. Uh, Brav actually opened our eyes to the world of grinding. The world of coffee making. Coffee basically. grinding. Yeah. Uh, and how important beans are. Uh, in terms of their grind size and how you grind them Mm. and uh, what size that you're using for what. Um, We were rookies. We've been dialing in. We were rookies. That's the terminology, dialing in. Um, Really excited to to tell you a little bit about it. Um, It's an April, September harvest bean, this one. And uh, it's notes, cocoa, cedar, brown sugar. And interestingly, when you do dial it in and you do start to get the perfect kind of ratio of water, time. Look at you sounding all official. Well, I know. I've learned a lot since Bravo <laughs> was here. Um, you know, true. You can start tasting some of the notes coming through and you know when you haven't quite got it right because yeah. it tastes a bit sour, a yeah. bit bitter. I've gone through it. You like taste the I notes and then suddenly good, it ends. Cheers to our first coffee back. Cheers. Always sips without me. Always. I got I can't. It's just, it gets cold. This that's was a good, good. That's a good cup. I think we've dialed it in pretty we well. Have, Brav, I think we figured it out. We've been dialing. We've been. Not the phones either. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But um, so nice to have you guys joining us mm. back. Thank you so much for tuning into our first episode back. What have you guys been up to since we've disappeared off the face of the podcast planet? I think our last one was like Halloween-ish. Yeah. Right? Of last year. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Maybe longer. Something like know. that. Maybe something like that. Um. What have you guys been we up did to? We live stream. In the comments. Yeah, we. Oh, that is true. Yeah, right? We wasn't did it, do a live wasn't stream. Wasn't it version. like Halloween? Yeah, it was. It was Something really close to Halloween. Yeah. Um, but today we're actually going to talk through Charlotte? the first major. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Dive so excited into it. to it. Yeah, me too. To talk about it. Why not start from the beginning, which is before the major brought Ross the Mania. Mm. Shit got wild. Yeah. I mean, in every sense of the world, not just for you. So many yeah, other pretty teams. Pretty much every team, you know, except for Optic, SSG. Yeah. And I mean, things got a little bit nuts for SSG too. Yeah, Obviously, or, not in terms of like their specific roster, but the change of home, change, yeah. change of scenery yeah. it always brings itself, you know, different, I'm sure, obstacles, you know, whether or not that new org believes in that exact roster and mm. stuff. I, you know, I wonder if there was any kind of turmoil there. I d- highly doubt it. Um, but, you know, it does bring some type yeah. of, like, change. It's just a different vibe. Like, I think, like, um, performance-wise, I mean, when you're top two all year, I don't think anyone's really worried about you, you know? I think um, mm. for the players, it's just a different, you know, I've gone through it quite a few times now, and it's just a different, um, I don't know, it's a different space. You know, sometimes it could be a really good experience, and then other times it can suck. You know, like, yeah. for example, um, like, when we had gone from clg to optic that was like a really really cool change you know like a really cool um opportunity whereas like from optic to we were just kind of left with no org you know and it was that was like a really yeah. stressful what are we going to do how are we going about this way so yeah it's just just different environment yeah it is different and maybe it did bring an element of stress you know with, well, obviously you know cloud nine have definitely taken a completely different route and obviously no um, kind of secret the fact that they have gone a little bit backwards in terms mm. of the team that they're investing in. That's totally, you know, up to them. But it must have been a little bit strange for, uh, I suppose, the Cloud9 Ross SSG now at the time to be like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. different directions, like fair enough. And then having to find a new home and, yeah. you know, going going to an, another org that you really believe in. Because I feel like those four lads really, like, secured themselves in that Cloud9 kind of, I don't know, just the way that they look, they move, yeah. they spoke, you know, it was all very cloud nine-ish, mm-hmm. wasn't it? And a lot of, um, I think the other thing that's quite difficult as well is a lot of your fans, um, and we'll move on to that as yeah. well, but a lot of your fans do 
you know, start to become diehard of that org too. Yeah. You know, they follow wherever you go, but they start to gain a lot of merch, yeah. you know, skins, whatever it may be, a lot of faith behind your org. So big big changes mentally for a lot of players, even if you're not changing actual rosters. Uh, Optic obviously stayed the same, mm. and we'll talk a little bit about them as we get into the major as well. But you guys made a huge change, mm. obviously, and we haven't really spoken about this yeah. um, together. No. We haven't done a podcast, obviously. Um, I know you've spoken a bunch about it on your stream, but, and you know, obviously like the YouTube video, because I'm editing PJ's channel now, so I've, I've seen it all. Um, but how, how has it been kind of moving forward and having to just like put those emotions behind, you know, it's been a fair few months now, yeah. you've had your first tournament, you had, you know, nicely actually had two online tournaments to ease into things mm -hmm. as well. But like, how, how has it been for you with the change? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's been good in the sense that I think we have an unbelievable roster that is going to be competing this year. Um, and, you know, I, I had a whole, you've seen the video, most of you probably watching have seen the video, so I won't dive into the ins and outs of why and everything. It's not like we couldn't before, but just trying to push that needle of... Trying to, to get to, it behind to, you now. Yeah, you know, yeah. trying to figure out what we could have done. Um, yeah, I feel good about it. Um, you know, we'll dive into the first event and stuff, but the first event was weird, um, and I feel like... The first event was probably going to feel like the most weird, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, I think now I feel very like normal about everything. Um, still sucks. You know, love Teej. You know, I haven't talked to him much, obviously, but hopefully, you know, we'll kind of get back to normal. But um, in terms of like the thinking about it, like before, like when we made the change, it's still on my mind a lot. Like even if, even though we had made the change and everything was done and I was happy with it and I think it was the right move, um, didn't mean I wasn't thinking about like, oh man, like this is just, you know, I just thought a lot, I was like, man, esports just sucks sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, especially with the situation we're in. But yeah, so now it just feels, um, I don't think I'll ever not miss teaming with TJ, but you know, like I love teaming with John and you know, it's just time goes on, I guess, you know, just figure it out and keep it going. Can't yeah. really keep doing on the past. I think uh, a lot of times, um, you know, uh, with some of the reception, I think a lot of people got it, funny enough. Like, and it wasn't that they lack of um, support or respect for mm. the TJ, but I think it, a lot of people understood where you guys were coming from. But, you know, I think with esports, a lot of the time it's part of the inevitable, which really sucks. It could be literally anybody yeah. uh, at any time, I just depending on what team is looking for it doesn't necessarily mean the player is bad or anything like that it's just about what you're looking for at the time yeah for us it's just and you know i talk again i, I like yeah. always say it, i've talked about it a bunch but it was just the game it yeah. was just the way if, yeah. if infinite wasn't infinite um and it's not like we were bad yeah. you know we won an event we won a major one of three teams to win a major which was a really yeah. big accomplishment um we had that ceiling we just couldn't find that consistency yeah. um you know my big hope with the roster is that that was gonna be the last roster i competed with you know, honestly, mm -hmm. I was like, I think that we are talented enough that we can do this. We all like each other. It wasn't a personal thing, um, which is kind of what happens with most teams. It's kind of like a personal, like, it just kind of all becomes too much and you kind of move on from one another. Right. Um, it wasn't that at all. It was just, you know, it's like I said, it's just the game. You know, I, I was I was bummed. I was really, really bummed yeah. that we couldn't make it I work know. and uh, have that kind of like dream. It's kind of like an insane thought to have that like, like I thought about it a lot, obviously it's an insane thought to have or like hope to have that like this will be the last roster like mm -hmm. ever, you know, I mean, it's, we had seven years, you know, know. give or give or take is obviously, you know, history, by the I way. mean, honestly, I think it's probably the longest in most esports. maybe Counter-Strike might have one us beat or something, um, with like Nip, like Nip or uh, Virtus Pro maybe, okay. but yeah, like we actually might be like one of the longest, longest rosters, running. period. There is a little bit of a weird thing with that because like Brad went to Call of Duty for a little bit and yeah. stuff like that. But um, yeah, just to sum it up, you know, just I, I always say I'm just glad that it happened. Changed my life, changed our lives. I don't know, you know. I know. It's a it's an emotional topic for sure and it's, it is difficult to talk about. That's why we're only going to quickly brush yeah. over it just so that any new watchers understand kind of like, you know, the change was made. Uh, moving forward with Renegade and then moving into then the Charlotte yeah, Major, Charlotte, which yeah. is the first major of the second year of Halo Infinite. Now, preparing for the first major, mm. you guys had two online tournaments. One, which was a non-official um, yeah. tournament. Kind of like three. Yeah, it was. Yeah, sorry. Three. 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 One non-HES and then one, two. Yeah, one non-official, um, which was just a bit of a taster, which is the SSG Snowdown. Uh, you guys won that? Yep. 
Uh, you won that one from the uh, elimination bracket. So yeah. that was an interesting one too. Uh, lots of reps under your belt as a new team, yeah. which is actually probably a good thing. And then the second one actually did go towards the first uh, major of the season, which the first um, online tournament was, a was qualifier seeding. Was a qualifier, was a qualifier seeding the qualifier and yeah. then the qualifier seeds Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and you guys won both of those. Yeah, I think um, I think well. the first one that we, the first HGS one that we won, we did it again through the lower bracket. Um, and then the second one being the one right before, obviously it was only like a week apart, yeah. but the second one we won in winner's bracket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so interesting. You won every tournament online before. Mm -hmm. Any kind of added pressure going into the land, like knowing that you guys have already, like you'd already stamped some type of opinion. I, yeah. I'm sure in the public and the fans and the mm. community's eyes uh, of, of this entrance now with this new roster change. Um, I wouldn't really say like, so like from a player perspective, I think that there wasn't any added pressure because I think as soon as we formed the team, like we know what's expected, you know, like we made the change for a reason. It's kind of like win or bust for the most part. Um, Obviously, in esports, only one team can win. Um, you know, I thought going into the event, it was like, I think the hard thing with winning those tournaments is it just showed our potential really quickly. Because um, going into the tournament, we had a really long talk about like, okay, look, we really think we're going to be really good. We think we're going to be a world championship caliber team, you know, with the right work and the right practice. Um, apologies if you hear Excuse some dog the dogs. Goes. Might be a parcel at the door. We can wait for a second. And the ring just went off. So, yes, could be a parcel. You can continue. So okay. Oh, okay. You want me, who, who, you want me? Who, who doesn't mind the uh, ambient sound? Okay. Dogs I'm, just in the I'm just making sure because uh, we could always wait and cut. But um, yeah, so I think, the, I think we had a long talk about it about like, look, if we can go to this event and get those learning reps and keep progressing like that's really what we want um winning the online stuff i think shifted those expectations a little bit where it's like okay wow we can really go win this thing in a short amount of time practice you know we have a month to a month and a couple weeks i think of practice which given how long the game's been out was like i think enough time but like on the grand scheme of it for how long we'll actually be teaming by the time you get to the end of the season like that's a long time to keep yeah. progressing um, so didn't add pressure in the sense that I think we already expect to win, but maybe raise our expectations slightly of being less like, okay, well, let's just go. We're going to get our reps in. Hopefully we win it. If we don't like no big deal to where when we won the online stuff, I think we were a little bit more like, okay, wow, we can go in and do this now. You know, um, I still think even with losing and we'll dive into it. I think we still kept that great mentality yeah. where like, I don't think the loss like got to us. Um, but you know, it's kind of like the one that got away. Like it was, we were really, really close. Yeah. And I think that it, it almost stung. It's a good thing that it was as close as it was, but also like stings more because of how close it is. But we're going to go through yeah. like, because obviously I think, that, you know, we both want to just jump straight yeah, to like I that. Know, just... But we'll, we'll go through like your entire tournament and yeah. then we'll save that for last because I can already feel myself like, you know, trying to get straight into yeah. it. Um, but you guys had, you know, a really great start. Yeah, um, number of one the tournament. Going yeah, into it. you know, fantastic stuff. Like you arrive, you're feeling pretty damn confident as well. You've mm. already online managed to beat pretty much every team that you're going to need to face. I think the only team that managed to actually take you down was G1. And Optic. And, yeah, sorry, and Optic yeah. the first time around. But like, sorry, yeah, apart from Optic. Like to uh, beat us G1. in a series was yeah. G1 and Optic. Correct. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're feeling pretty good about, mm -hmm. you know, everything. And obviously like close games too. Um, and then you get to LAN and it's just, this is something I wanted to talk about with you because this happens so often, like every single LAN, hmm. you know, you, Optic, SSG, G, I mean, you're all the damn same on day one, the European teams or teams <laughs> that are just not supposed to do yeah. what they do to you guys right at the very beginning, hmm. they just like try and. I don't know. It's like they've un it's like upsets. tied your, your laces yeah. together when you're not looking and you've tripped <laughs> up in map one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like wh wherever it is. But that first series is always showing so many like rusty characteristics mm -hmm. of teams. And you really see like, I guess like not being fully prepared from the, the, the get go uh, of a lot of our top teams. So talk to me about that first, that first one with Narby, I believe it was for yeah. you guys. And, and you know, map one, you guys lost it. Yeah. I mean, it was a, uh, it was a close series. Um, I mean, and this is no disrespect by the way, from what I'm saying in terms of these teams, you know, they're still really good teams and on any given day, if they turn up, they turn up, but yeah. you know, in terms of expectation and, um, 
hours and hours and hours of watching and stats mm. and just, you know, percentages. You're, you're really, in terms of the way you guys are and the caliber of team, you know, really that one is one that you should be winning. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I just think what happens essentially is, first of all, like, especially in this game, I think it's really hard to separate yourself individually overall. And people have done that, but it's not in the traditional way and i think we've kind of talked about that a little bit it's a lot about weapon control and stuff like that and then after that it kind of falls down to um to teamwork teamwork and breaks and stuff like that um so for the first series of the day you know you're going against a really good talented team we don't have practice against them because like they're in a different country you know it's just impossible to play against them essentially um especially with where we're spread out but the first game it, it, you're just rusty like you just you get on or you sorry you wake up and you go and play and you want to come out like really hot but it's the same way of what we're talking about and we'll keep talking about of the progression you know the gameplay is different you know yeah. what we did online some bits will work some bits don't work and you kind of have to you know our comms online are like really we get it especially with having those like three tournaments like really close to each other um and we're scrimming online every day it's really easy to get dialed in. You get your teamwork down. Understand. Okay, we need to do this. We need to do that. And then you jump into that first series and what you needed to do online isn't what you have to do on land. Yeah. You know, maybe we're over communicating online or on land. We're like online. We're not, we're not over communicating. Right. Yeah. So it's just so about, things get like muddled yeah. and, you know, you can't quite pinpoint exact things to, to take note of, et cetera. Yeah. There's a lot to it. Like it's a big change. It's a big, it's a big change. You're yeah. going from, yeah. you know, 60, 90, 40 30 ping to zero um muffled comms you know as good as the pcs are and stuff that we have here compared to being like daisy chain linked together your comms aren't going to be as clear um like one issue i had at the event was like with uh teaming with john it's like i have to get used to it and figure it out it's like he's just a lot louder than i'm used to like with (laughs) tj yelling (laughs) yeah like he like he you know he gets into it but then like he's just like louder where tj like He's very, I mean, you know, you obviously know TJ, you guys all know TJ. He's, he can get into it, but he's just like much more like, even, even him getting into it is like, like a reserve, like he puts a little emphasis on his voice and other than that. And I'd say kind of almost the same for me. Like you don't hear me getting hyped ever, um, with John and like getting to a land event. It was like, yeah, it's just those small little things of like picking up on, okay, hold on. Let me like lower my volume dial a little bit here. Like, you know, so I can focus, um, first year is really hard to do that. And, like, I think they yeah. have the, and this is no disrespect to them, I think they have the benefit of it sucks they're playing us first, but, like, I think that the first match is almost always, like, for every team, like, the worst gameplay, yeah. you know, across yeah. the board. Um, so I think they have the, you know, like, okay, even if we lose mindset, like, we're just trying to have a really good series. Um you know we don't have we don't get to have that for us it's like we yeah. have to we have to sweep our pool yeah um yeah so just you know just a different vibe and getting dialed in you know yeah just really the... really really quick like i don't want to take too much time on it but i'm just curious mm-hmm. is there like for for a lot of the the pool play matches mm-hmm. depending on obviously who who you have in your pool and who you're like you know not super like nervous to play or not thinking too much about it um you know i compared you know comparing an optic uh to a team who just managed to make pool play mm. within the qualifiers or wherever yeah you know not naming specific teams here but just a team in general do you find yourselves having to try and keep that same type of energy and focus that you would against optic against them or are you happy to dial it back or is that when mistakes can be made and capitalized on like do you feel like you, are, you know, especially as like almost like a captain of your team. Basically like you play every team like, the same is what you're saying. Yeah, but do you have to be like, okay, guys, we actually need to have a certain level of energy yeah. here and like call out the way we would normally call out and not troll and not do this. Because yeah. it's easy to lose yourself in that kind of yeah. mentality, uh, you know, facing teams that I, I suppose you feel very confident against. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think even the easy, the, how do I word this correctly? I always want to say you play every team the exact same, but the reality is you don't. And it's like you try, but the goal is of a good team is you try to. Um, But yeah, like the intensity that you have in the finals is never going to be the intensity that you have in a round one pool play or a a game one pool play match. It's just not, it's, I've been competing a really long time. It's just not possible. Like it's plain and simple. It it just isn't. I wish it was. Um, I I hate it. Like I hate kind of jumping out and feeling like that rust. Um, 
But you still, I think, like I said, I think the good thing with being a great team and it's something I think we had a lot with TJ, like with how long we had been teaming, I think that um, we really figured out how to up our intensity as much as we could, essentially. And I think with John uh, teaming with Renegade now, I think that we're going to keep kind of figuring that out. Yeah. You know, and, and the good thing with us is we take it, like in him especially, like I love teaming with him, he takes it really serious. So like yeah. if we come out the gate slow, he's not just like someone who's like, uh, you know, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we we're playing the third place team in our pool. Like, it's like, no, no, no. Like, what can yeah. we, we try to, you know, we were learning from that series right off, right off the bat. Yeah. So. so you guys went from strength to strength after that kind of first little mini hiccup. Obviously you got the series cleared pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily after that one. Got dicey. Um, it got dicey. Yeah. But you, you did, you did what the you needed flag, to uh, do. The flag juggling. And I mean, like just John. going, just going, well, it's the same thing. <laughs> I was watching it's the same John thing we said, like dropping going more flags yeah. than he was killed. Well, like, you know, point. so <laughs> it, it's the same thing we said, like just getting used to that land mechanics and land environment you know a week before the tournament that update comes out and messes with the yep. objective thing we had like four days of practice on it i think and then yeah. like you get to the tournament and it's overtime and you're running the flag and he fumbles it like two or three times and you're like shit like yeah. okay you know and, and again i, think but, I saw brad also fumble yeah sometimes. i think there, I, he had like a he had like a tiny one compared to john's, I saw you john's fumble like, the other day you know like, yeah i mean, I mean still, luckily it's still, getting it's getting fixed or it, it is, is fixed now yeah. so luckily it'll be less of a yeah. thing but um yeah that was I mean, it's easy to do. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you know, I think it's, it's interesting when something has changed that has been such like a muscle memory yeah. for such a long time. Um, that one is always just mm-hmm. a, a, a huge game changer. Yeah. So that was quite funny, though. Yeah, watching was, that. Looking um, back on it, it's funny. If we would have lost, I would have been like, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus. <laughs> I, uh, I was watching that happen live with Wes on the desk. And <laughs> we watched John fumble the flag for about 30 seconds. Yeah. And you guys didn't get the cap. And this is on pit. Yeah. CTF right on your base lip yep. like the lip of the base and um, west turns to me because especially when john dies and the flag gets returned west turns to me, god damn he's gonna be blaming the flag drop this time <laughs> i was like of course he is yeah. <laughs> um that, it just made me laugh but you know obviously looking really good progressing mm. through talk to me a little bit about ssg the fact that they were your nemesis truly your nemesis towards the end of last you know yeah. first year last year you just you guys just couldn't get past them. It was something to do with their play style and the way that you guys were playing and it just wasn't working at all. Yet you'd have closer games with Optic, the world champions yeah. and but SSG it was like a, an impossible mountain to climb. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, going into that series, um, and the fact that you guys looked completely different, uh, going up against Space Station and why and why that was. Yeah, I mean, I think um Honestly, I just think last year, I think Optic and SSG were just clear, like clear number one, clear number two. I think uh, I've said this before, and I think I said it in our last podcast that we did in October. I think we were the third. Um, we didn't get the solidified placement of third. At Orlando, we lost twice to SSG. Yeah. We got fourth. And then at Worlds, we got um, top six. We lost to Optic and lost to SSG. Yeah, the top um, six we for didn't sure get the, is a fumble because of... It's a fumble in terms one of two placements yeah. because... SSG kind of messed up and it just messed up the it messed bracket. Up the bracket and, and that's yeah. why you But I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, hey, we got six. You know, no, no discredit yeah. to the other teams that, that placed above us. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this time around, um, honestly, it started out shaky. Like, SSG is really, really good. Yeah. Um, that's not going to go away. That's not going to go away no. all year. It didn't go away last year. Um, they're incredible. Uh, this year, I just think, and it was part of the, you know, the, the reasoning of the change was just struggling with that slaying power and that speed. And, you know, they just, they play so fast and so efficient. And, um, you know, I think with TJ, we were a little bit more methodical. I, I really view it as similar to like how Optic played, which I think is why... You were a better match. We matched up better with them. Um, like, even at Worlds, like, I think we matched up better with Optic, but they still beat us 3-0. So it's, yeah. it's easy to be like, oh, we had better games, but we still lost 3-0. And at the yeah. end of the day, that's them just being better than us. Yeah. But just so people get the comparison of, like, the play styles, like, we just struggled more, I think, yeah, with SSG. Definitely. That's no discredit to any like, team. I feel like you guys were a bit more exposed against Space Station than you were with Optic. I feel like you had more of a fight. There was more of a back and forth with yeah. Optic, with, with Space Station. It felt like they had a lot of the control of pretty much yeah. every single game you were playing. It was, yeah, it, I, I agree. I very, very much agree. Optic, it was, like, a slow burn of, like... Mm-hmm losing over time ssg was like they just played you know they're cloud nine at the time but they just played so fast and yeah. are super super fast but really efficient to where like you'll yeah. be down three you'll lose a flag 3-0 and you're just kind of like what just happened you how, know um how did it make you feel like especially as a team like just you know if you can think about 
I think back to that moment, how did it make you feel like doing that against Space Station at LAN? I mean, because to you, beat them, yeah, because you had some hell of a games against Space Station. Yeah. I think you were going to be there like Thanos because you're so like you were really on it. I'm not going wood for that one, but thank you. <sighs> but you really were like, yeah, we just so had a so you know, on we, it we against a... Space Station. So, how, how did it feel to be, you know, not that long ago, not a couple of months ago, mm. really just never, you know, feeling like you weren't even close to beating Space Station at the time? Yeah, to um, now pretty effortlessly. It wasn't effortlessly. You're gassing it up way too much. We literally, saying, okay, we literally should. You're I'm like, saying, I'm saying effortlessly in the fact that the com- the comparison between the two. Oh well, yeah, is effort- so effortlessly huge. in the fact that we beat them twice. Yes. Yeah. No, beat them twice, but also like in a in a fr- pretty good way as well. Well, I feel like the thing is though, I think that only one of those was a good way. Like, okay. I Because the so the winners semis that we played, we really should have been down 0-2. Yeah. And that's why I. I'm happy. Uh, I'm actually happy that we played them again, and we were able to. I think we three owed them, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, right? Did. We three owed them in the losers final. So like the beating them a second time was a little bit more like okay, like we. It's a long year, but like we just solidified ourselves as top yeah. two, you yeah. know? Because beating them twice is a big I deal. Think, I think the reason why I say effortlessly is because I really the memorable one for me is that three and zero. Yeah, you like losers. Like, well, because the losers finals was a little more. It was a little more swift. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, which I think is what it's like you said, it's what you're remembering basically. But the winter semis, I was like, I felt I was really confident going into the winter semis. And then we were battle, you know, game one was battle, game two was a battle. We did cruise a little bit, games three and four, like Argyle is one of our better flags. Yeah, you um, I forget what game four was against them. I think it was a stronghold. I think it was like street strongholds or something like that. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, we played a really good game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just felt good be- being yeah. them. Um, you know, we got a long way to go. You know, we'll talk about the rest of the event, but beating them kind of felt like just that step in the right direction that we've yeah. been kind of searching for, you know? So, obviously, to get to that loser's finals, not that you want to get to a loser's finals, yeah. but you obviously had to play Optic. Choked um, it. Yeah, this was, this was, for me, one of the hardest watches I've ever had. Yeah. And this is not like me making you, be, you know, making no, you okay. feel bad or anything like that. It's just one of those things. Like, I'm sure it was probably one of the hardest series you've had to yeah, play in a damn while. it was. Um, it sucked. Because I think that that inevitable feeling of being so close but so far. Like, you would, you guys were tournament point twice. Mm-hmm. And um, the reverse sweep always is going to feel crap. Yeah. So, like, really tough. But, like, you know, and I, th- I would say another thing is that you guys are so close. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in, in competition level right now, you and Optic are so neck and neck. Um, obviously, Optic, I feel like having better experience as a team to now take them over the line when, mm-hmm. when they need to. Yeah. Which has been proven twice now in two different series. So, like, you know, no matter how close you guys are, they clearly have enough experience as a team, as a unit, mm. to be able to do what needs to be done to finally win. Yeah. Whether that's in time, whether that's in a point, whether that's, you know, being patient or pushing at the right time. Like they just they just have that down. And you can see the building blocks for your team yeah. of where that's coming in. But the fact that you were right there with them and challenging them in that way, I think speaks for itself. But I think there's a lot of people probably watching and who watched that weekend who are just like you know, not doubting you guys, but not really fully understanding what it takes to make a change as a team and how impactful that change yeah. is on the entire team. Like, I, I remember seeing a lot of people on social media saying stuff like, well, they only change one player. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you mean they need more practice and stuff? And I'm yeah. like, no, you have no idea. Actually, one change changes almost every yeah. single player and how they play. Yeah. So it's so it it, it Expe- is such especially a big with thing. our swap because going from Huge. TJ who it's is very a, different a TJ to John yeah. they're just two very different players yeah um, yeah you know it's just it's one of those things like social media people aren't going to get it um, I just I've gotten to the point in my life where like I mean you know this I, we talk about all the time I just don't expect yeah. people to and like there's no point in even like kind of like you replying to say, that you yeah say so much, yeah you, you can you know a certain amount of time like you me. either get it or you don't if you don't get it like it's okay i don't blame you you're not in the, my shoes i understand you know from on paper it looks like we've been teaming a really long time um especially three of us because we have and i think yeah. but and on the same token i think that that's what allows us to be i think that's what allowed us to be so good so fast is that three of yeah. us have teamed for so long but then on the flip side of that um when it comes down to it's exactly like you said. There's like championship moments, like really close game. You have a uh, on the um, 
King of the Hill, we're up 3 2, 40 seconds left. Um, Brad and I made like a really average play. Joey made a great play being trippy, made yeah. a great play um, with the repulsor. It's really hard to kill a repulsor guy on the hill. Yeah. Um, but like <laughs> we so actually, odd. we made, we actually made the call to go for the overshield and, and leave him in the hill. But yeah. I was already there. So I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to go. You guys go. But yeah. then Brad was trying to help me. That moment of like indecisive. Yeah, exactly. As a team so like costs. I kind of probably shouldn't have pushed, but then like I think Brad should have just been like, screw PJ. Like I'm going to go get the overshield. And if we get that, we probably lock down the game. Yeah. And I think that's where that's the championship. Again, championship moments. Like you need to be able to like close game, you know exactly what to do right at the right time, yeah. right in the right moment. Um, and we we're really close. We we're yeah. really, really close. But it's like you said, like they're they're an incredible team. They're world, literally a world championship team. Yeah. And I think that caliber, that pedigree for them last event showed. And obviously the hope for us is like, hey, we were really close in a good amount of time. So if we can keep progressing and learn from those moments, like that can that can be us. For you know, sure. we're we're 40 seconds away from winning. We have a two oh lead on pit flag. Like we're going through scenarios that we've never been in, you know. Well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. I think the biggest like difference maker between you guys at the moment, um, you know, from from literally watching so many games, there's no doubt Optic right now the the better, more polished team. Yeah. I mean, oh, 100%. obviously. I think what is really like telling is the fact that you're getting into these situations um, and we're seeing you comfortably start to like control games right at the beginning. Your starting strats have improved tenfold. Mm. You know, you're, you're getting the up on, right from the jump and, yeah. and you know, you're 2-0 up in pit flag, you're 2-0 yeah. here, you're, you know, you've got, you've got three caps on King of the Hill, you know, stuff like that. I think Optic, first of all, are a very chippy team. They've been in so many situations now for practically the entire of last season. Yeah. Obviously, minus a change here or there, but then stuck together, won a world championship together, won you know, a major before that. They've been in very, very dicey situations yeah. and that they've been able to learn from and to, to take things away from. You guys haven't. Yeah. You know, you're still figuring out with that element of bringing complete newness to the way that you guys are going to play mm. as an entire team and players to the fact of these, you know, huge decision, decision making moments in games that you haven't had to make yeah. yet as a team and how you're going to even approach those as a team and, and the way that your team are like, you know, you, you have to figure that out and you have to figure out with the experience. And my goodness, did you get a lot of experience of yeah. those situations? Because mm. that grand final was it's, basically it's, entirely tight crazy decision making yeah. moments that just just swung games or m edged a game here and there it was yeah. wild how like small the margins were in every every single map and, and mode of the series yeah i think i think for all the top teams i think a lot of series are going to be going that way pretty much all year i think that yeah, the, the, the top teams are really good this year um obviously i'm hoping we're going to be able to push it you know to where yeah. we're coming out on top but um yeah it's like you said it's just a lot of learning um they're good. They're really good, and it's the same. It's yeah. the same way of when we played SSG, like the the first time around, the winter semis. Like you know, I felt like we were really, really good heading into the event. Yeah. And online with them is always kind of like, eh, whatever. And then you play against them, and you're like, damn, like they're yeah. really good. Um, so yeah, it's just just the learning experience. You know, people. Mm -hmm. I, I've used this reference a lot, and it's not to. I just need to make sure people know this. I'm not saying we're going to go on to win everything because, like, yeah. it's a long year. Um, I'm hoping we can win a few, you know, maybe win a world championship. Who knows? But um, I, I literally look at Optic as, you know, they're clearly the number one team. Um, you know, I think we're right there. I think it's a sheer right there. Um, but they're, they're number one. You know, they won, yeah, they've won three tournaments in a row now. Um, but they're a really good reference point because I remember them being the favorites going to KC and they got third. And I think in getting that third, you know, they really should have beat us at KC. Yeah. Like we had a really clutch oddball win and then we go on to win game five and then it's just emotions and I mean, cloud nine is cloud nine. So they're like unbeatable some at moments too, but then cloud nine three owes them. Um, then they had six months to grow and practice and play and just learn from that. And then not that they were unbeatable because people like SSG and FaZe did a really good job at Orlando and Worlds, but like, you know, they won. They won. They yes. didn't lose. They didn't go through losers bracket once. So they were the number one. Um, so yeah, just like time is very, very valuable at the end of the day. And the hope for us and where we're kind of going from is just use it as a learning experience and, and yeah, just grow. You know, the a lot yeah. of the mistakes that we made um, probably won't happen again. But then, like, you'll play at a tournament and new mistakes, you'll, or, you know, you'll play at practice or you'll go to a tournament and, like, 
new things are going to come up yeah, that I you mean, then go and learn from with with as as other teams adapt and grow you have to grow with them and learn what not to do against their growth yeah exactly no literally it's just and it's a never-ending like it's literally by the end of a the cycle. year yeah it's a never-ending cycle yeah. and by the end of the year it's like okay well who learned it's like learning yeah, the fastest. yeah exactly yeah, basically. who learned the fastest here yeah. who adapted the fastest 100%. um it's a good starting point for us it sucks because we let it go, get away a little bit but credit yeah. to them they played you know i think that they if, were they were out i months. i think that they played some amazing team and individual yeah you know halo and Honestly, like if, if they if they don't step it up the way that they did, like in those games three, four, and five, like we probably just win, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but um, the, like I said, they're the champs for a reason. Before we move away from the grand final and from optic, um, I just quickly want to ask you, yeah, looking at the time just to make sure. Um, I just want to quickly, I want to quickly ask you about um, <laughs> taking away the fact that you guys didn't take home that major, yeah. you didn't win that grand final. It got all the way to the very end of that series, though. Can you tell me in the moment, and this is like during the series, mm. away from that that finish, you know, yeah. away from you guys losing, did it feel as good to play something as crazy as that grand final as it did for us to watch it? Because us watching it was so electric and exciting yeah. and insanely entertaining. I mean, it's been dubbed one of the best grand finals ever in mm. halo history ever people yeah. loved it did it feel as good like what is it like playing in a situation like that where it is so close and tense and exciting and like when you do pick up that you know one of the maps and it's going back and forth you're like let's go we can do this what's it like actually being in that moment playing on the stage you know as opposed to us watching and f trying to feel excitement for you yeah um i don't know I, you get hyped or is it just all like I, you know, I, I, this i'm is just, just work? i think i'm like really weird where i've just been doing this a really 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 long time i've been in some crazy series and i know how good that series was and like i think the thing that's that I, i'll give myself some credit for it's give myself credit and also kind of roast myself a little bit because i can give myself credit and like i can look back at it and be like damn that's pretty crazy but on the flip side of that like when it's going on or we just lost i, I just don't i just don't look at it and be like oh wow well but like it was so so entertaining or so close i do in the sense that like when I'm trying to learn from it, I can say that. Yeah. But like in the moment, I'm not. It's just like, you know, we lose a really close King of the Hill. And it's like, damn. Like, you yeah. know, or like you, yeah. we blew the pit fly game and you're just like, oh man, God damn, you know, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, just yeah. damn it, you know. Or we win the uh, like or we win the King of the Hill game, like, you know, zero seconds on the clock, we win it. Um, when I'm, it's crazy because like, it's, it's just hard to explain, but like, because I feel like when I'm in the moment, I'm trying to figure out okay, we won, but like, it's almost like something's going wrong, if that makes sense. Cause it's like, okay, we won, clock's at zero, we win the, we win the king of the hill, but we're not like playing like fully to our, <laughs> it was insane. But like, we're also at the, on the same token of that, we're also like not really playing to our full potential. Yeah. Cause like, so I the, think the whole time so you're then, worried? it's not worried. It's just like at the end of the game, I'm not worried if we won it. Like I'm okay, great. I'm really happy that but we won it, done. but yeah, it's, we gotta, I gotta figure right. this out and we gotta keep it going and we gotta maybe step it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm happy, I'm hyped, I'm happy, but um, I think the easiest way to answer it is like, when I look back on it, I'm like, damn, that was really crazy. That was like not, you know, yeah. like, but in the moment, okay, it's not really like, do you remember, entering your do you mind? remember watching, um, it's a long time ago now, but yeah. like the Noble Black series, like CLG versus Noble Black, where we tied game five like three times. What, when you were on CLG? Yeah, when I was on CLG. It was twenty four me, maybe. Yeah, it was in twenty it was so it was in twenty fifteen. Some yeah, of you will remember uh, it, some of you won't. I it was, was one of the it was one of the crazy cross. Yeah, it was one of the craziest <laughs> series like ever. I'll show it to I you. Might I might have to we'll have to watch it I on the like, screen. Yeah, maybe. I feel like I've showed cute. you a part of it, but probably not like the whole thing. Um but sorry like sorry if I'm sniffing guys by the way, because I have really bad allergies. Yeah. It's okay. They'll forgive right. you. Um anyway. Like one of the craziest series you'll ever watch. Like genuinely, like a team tied game five three different times. We choked, they choked, we choked, they choked, and then we managed to win it. Like when that's going on, I'm not like, wow, this is crazy. I'm literally like, <laughs> dude, can we figure? Like, can we figure this out? Like, you know, and why then, is it this hard? Yeah, and then we win it, and it's like, okay, damn. Or, or or we lose it, and it's like, okay, damn, damn that was crazy. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. But it's I think like you have to step away from the situation, and then relook at it. But people are different with that too, because like. For example, when you go back, we'll, we'll go back and watch it, but like people, people are reacting like even like players like Maniac was like, oh, dude, like Jesus, you know, stuff like yeah. that for the most part. And I could be wrong because I don't remember my reaction, but for the most part, I'm pretty 
I mean, you know me, I'm just pretty like even keel. It's like, okay, yeah, we definitely. tied. Like level head. Yeah, like it's just, just I, in, you know, focused without being like so laser focused, you can't think of anything else. But yeah, I yeah, feel like you. we tied and I'm just like, okay, like let's yeah. let's do this let's do that it's just not like a oh dude damn it you know yeah or like a soup not i am like that i guess but not like in a super reactionary way yeah. i guess that's easiest way to explain it can i just say real quick before we teeter off this and, and move on very very quickly to get on our last topic that'll be like we'll race through it yeah um that king of the hill was crazy <laughs> that like it, that like oh my gosh that gaming, zero second is just king crazy. of the hill was yeah. nuts yeah talk to me like how does that process even work because to me like I might as over. You yeah, know what well, I mean, but you just jump in the hill it, and like, <sighs> just shows you what one round of slays. Can yeah, do. well, so rough. like competitive gaming is just crazy where everything is a domino effect. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's for the better for you, and sometimes it's for the worst. Um, APG's rocket got deflected by a grin. It was zero seconds on the clock, or like right around, like probably like one second or whatever. And Brad, um, being APG, shot a rocket. It's a good rocket. A nade randomly deflects it. You know, we're able to get those kills and, you know, the Cafe Hill, obviously, you know, yeah. you know, it's a pretty lockdown. Like you can lock it down. It is. Um, it was like t right time, right place. Yeah. In we the just all four. Yeah. yeah. And um, crazy. Situation yeah. It's just it's just rocket. gaming and esports is just wild. I you mean, know? what's the comms like there? You're just like, we, we can do this. Like, are you like it, the comms are we need, were they like, calm or were they like, no, it's like it's a mix of both. It's like. Right. I mean, we just have to push in. So the comms were just like, we got to hop it. We got to hop it. Like, we go like go forward, yeah. go forward. Because you can't... Do you know where they were going to spawn? Once we got the kills? Off? Yeah. Yeah, because once we... I'm pretty sure we four deaded them yeah, once you, we get those did. kills. And then after that, it's like, okay. I mean, we still have to, like, hold the line. But, yeah. you know, you can... Now we have the advantage of, like, we know where they're spawning and this right. and that. And, um, yeah. I mean, it it's is. not easy to do, to hold, especially against a great team like that. But, um, yeah, just... You know, yes. Yeah, every moment every was, moment has its uh, yeah. or every I don't know sequence has. I'm pretty sure that was the one where I was watching with Shazzy on the desk and I um my knees like you know when they say in films like yeah. when your knees buckle yeah like well I didn't think that was actually a real thing well it was yeah like my knees just gave way and Shazzy had to like pick me back up again because I I couldn't <laughs> believe. <laughs> what I was watching. I use I use this like <laughs> reference um about game seven and people some people like took it the wrong way um. And I get why, because it's like, I'm not crediting their win to like a weird play, right? Yeah. But the same way, like I would credit, like I'd credit our win to the most random thing that ever happened. Well, that like, rocket. yeah, that rocket. Yeah. Like I don't think if you play it a hundred times, it only happens there, one there, time. To be fair though, the margins uh, with our top teams are so freaking small that you could probably look at a lot of different maps in a series and probably attribute one yeah. to certain things. Well, so it's, it's just split second decision-making and it's just every micro movement makes yeah. such a difference. Um, literally, uh, you know, I, I was kind of about to say, so I made this reference about game seven. Game seven, it was like a tie game. Um, I think it was like 40 to 40 or something like that. I don't really remember specifically. Um, we had just cleared him out of PD. Brad was one hit. Lucid was middle of the map. We had just killed him in PD. Brad grabs a stalker and Lucid, he makes a good play. It's just, it's a good play, but he throws yeah. a spike nade into PD, kills Brad. I was leaving at the time. Rockets are up in five seconds. I go, I'm going to leave. Like, I got to leave it. Like, I got to shoot rockets. By the time we spawned up and we're able to get over there, like the rocket fight kind of ends, the stalk, uh, the stalk rifle despawns. And then like, that's how they get that at the end. And the reason I brought it up with the same thing with, um, the APG play, yeah. two completely different plays, because Lucid, Lucid's play is just like a heads up play. Yeah, APG's play is like an unfortunate thing, yeah. obviously. But it's like, it's just those, so many games come down to just these split second, yeah, split, 100%. you know, and like I said, ours is like fluky, Lucid's is like, he just made a good play. But like, I always think in my head, I'm like, damn, and I'm sure you could, APG would probably say the same thing. It's like, man, if I, I wish I just would have went for that stalker rifle. Well, I mean, APG's probably going, oh, dude, if I just, if, if he just stands still, I don't know if he could have, because I don't remember exactly what was yeah, happening. There's a lot of what ifs. Yeah, but it, yeah. exactly. And that's that's the point I was making with it, was it's like yeah. there's so many what ifs in a game. And it's like, I bet, like, because you could, again, argue that the series is over. If if they win that game, the series is closer yeah, to over than you going to game seven. You can argue so many different things. I mean, if you didn't repulse that rocket back down we're down hole, we're down oh two exactly and that's you know, if you know if john didn't fumble the flag at the right of the bit, lip of the base you guys would have been up another flag you could have won yeah you know what i mean it's yeah. just like so many tiny 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 things that build up and, and create situations and that you know i just can't wait for a whole season of yeah it. me too the it's crazy thing wicked. the crazy thing about 
what we're talking about is that stuff like that yeah. happens all the, time, no, all the time, but you only see one POV. Like, so you don't necessarily know. <laughs> yeah. Like, Cause I think, because uh, we, we can only see one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. So I think Pomage, yeah. and we're going to jump on because we got to get off here soon, but Pomage coached the Call of Duty, the Optic Call of Duty team for like an international tournament. And he, at the end of it, was like, I knew how good people were, but like, you don't realize how actually insane it is. He's yeah. like, I was watching, um, I think he was, I think it was karma. I'm just kind of like making something up here, but he was like, you know, I look over to my right and like formal is killing like three people and like, he just got killed. He shouldn't get. And like, obviously it's like on his point of view there. But then at the same time, karma is like looking up in the air and like shooting a hell storm. This is a, I forget what game it was, but it doesn't matter. But he's like shooting a streak out of the sky. And you're just like, as a coach watching, you're just like, what the, like, what the, what the hell? hell? Yeah. What is yeah. going on? But it's crazy because exactly what we're talking about. Those small moments, everything's making a difference. You're only getting one point of view. Yeah. You only see one one yeah. of what, you know, and obviously sometimes you see more because you can see multiple people, but you get the Yeah, point. no, 100%. I mean, it just shows you how great, you know, our observer team is and the HCS to be able to like find moments where you can see stuff like, you know, I said it to it's Sal. Di- it's so difficult. To L-Town. Like it's the, so hard. To L-Town, uh, Sal is L-Town. To be a good observer takes a lot of skill, yeah. a lot of heads up, a lot of knowledge about the game, and honestly, just like a good mind for entertainment, but damn, is it hard. Yeah. Oh, I can I, I, I can do, do it. it. I said to Sal, like I talked to him Sunday night, and I was like, on the SSG series, you know, where I had the rocket repulse, I literally said to him, like, I don't know why you're on my point of view there. Like that, like... Thank God he was. Yeah, no, but that's... That that's, was one of the hypest moments I know, I've, that's, I've, but, I've but it just goes to show, like, it's just crazy. Like, it's just at per- right time, right moment, perfect... It was a perfect play because it worked out perfectly, but, Dude. like, to go to that screen at that moment, it's just crazy. I don't know. Yeah. It's just crazy. Can I just say, though, uh, just wrapping up, Charlotte, you had one hell of a tournament. Yeah. You know, you did. Yeah. You did. I know, like, you were disappointed in the grand final, but at the end of the day, like, it was a really difficult battle. And in terms of, like, what you're doing, yeah. it's, you know, it's really hard yeah. to, like, be here, there, everywhere. And you really are here, there, Thanks, everywhere buddy. and doing everything and to the best of your ability. And I think a lot of people put unrealistic expectation on you as a player because you can you can slay but you also do heavy objective work yeah. and and you change certain situations in the game so i think to say that to say anything other than you played well is a complete disservice to to what you did out there but you were phenomenal in Thanks, charlotte buddy. You amazed me. You like I felt like you reached a whole new level as a player and <laughs> I think you know having John on there has definitely done yeah. that. Um but you were freaking insane. So Thanks, like you babe. should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Um last thing we're going to quickly talk about mm. um before we get into next week um is you know the changes that have happened. The shroud screen, yeah. uh the bandit rifle Especially with the shroud screen right now, how do you feel like that is going to change competition? You know, in scrims tonight, yeah. you guys, you know, thinking about ways to use the shroud screen and what you're going to do with it, and, and how you're going to combat it and mm. stuff like that. Is that a whole new focus? Yeah, it's now? a whole new, it's yeah. a whole new thing. Um, just gonna take time. Same thing we've been saying. Just gonna take time. Uh, the good thing is that, like, at least these changes are happening, and we have a good <laughs> amount of time. You okay? Sorry. It's okay. Um, <laughs> You know, we at least have a good amount of time until the next LAN event to dial it in and figure it out. Um, yeah, like you said, just new strategies, new everything. Uh, we're going kind of like leisure-ish about it at the moment. We're kind of slowly ramping back up. Um, you know, you don't want to get burnout too quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've been putting time into the new season, but not necessarily practicing yet. And then now, uh, just this week, we started playing a couple, you know, a couple scrims here and there. Love and it. um yeah, start going every day again here soon. Probably next week, start going like every day for the most part. Love that, love that. We'll um we'll jump into a few more of the changes that have come yeah. uh, into Halo uh, next episode just because we're running out of time. And not only that, I think it's easy to dive pretty deep into, you know, the way things are going to change a little bit, you know, how it's going to bring a whole different vibe to the game, uh, tactics, strategy, stuff like that. You know, we'll we'll dive into that a little bit more, but let's rate our coffee before we wrap things up. So, bravo, bravo <laughs> it was <laughs> delicious i love love this coffee i mean we're like at the bottom of the beans here so like this is going to be gone within the been next brewing. couple of days we have been brewing um i'm definitely going to give this a nine out of ten i love all of the notes um you know some of my favorite notes cocoa cedar brown sugar you can't yeah. really go wrong with those 
I really, really liked it. And I like how it's local to New Jersey. It's something we haven't tried before. And I, I really, really enjoyed it. Same. I got 9.2. Oh, a 9.2. Yeah, I really, really liked it. It's close to a 10 for me. Um, I'm going to start trying to be a little bit harsher of my ratings. And I know yeah. that's not necessarily making sense because I just rated 9.2. But you should know how good it is. It's really, really I just good. Said that. It's really good. And I think that we figured out how to brew it um, really nicely now. Yeah. Which I'm looking forward to We're dialed in. doing with other brews now going yeah. forward to like really kind of keep that it's fun we, it's we're, fun. We're, we're dialing it in and uh we're getting we're getting a bit better in terms of our bean knowledge and what to do with the yeah. beans and how to brew them etc it's a whole new world um but yeah let us know what you think of everything we discussed going through charlotte as much as we possibly could um i think next week we're probably gonna touch upon a few other teams uh from charlotte and just kind of check in with them and how they're doing um and talking a little bit about those teams and kind of where we think they're at in terms of this season and maybe some like future uh kind of like i guess predictions for mm. how teams are gonna do uh, and we might dive also back into a little bit of call of duty next week so mm. we're gonna do a bit of homework on that we did see obviously the major and stuff and exactly what happened with optics run and, we're just short on time for this yeah one. And, obviously and the major ultra winning major but takes a big uh it does like we wanted to have a dedicated uh episode on the Halo. major and how you yeah. guys have been doing as a team it does take up a bit of time but let us know what you think of everything we talked about uh give us ideas for things you want to hear us talk about next week or in future episodes always welcome to have topics in and we want to discuss things that you guys want to hear about so let us know but apart from that thank you so much for tuning in we'll be back regularly on your screen so make sure you check we out will our twitter. see you next week yeah our twitter uh, make sure you have notifications on on youtube if you want to know when we're uploading it should be every single thursday uh cross fingers um but it was so nice to be back I'm yeah. very excited so thank you so much hope you ha guys have a great rest of your week thanks and for a watching. fantastic weekend and as always you can say it as always stay on the grind Thank you.